All right. Well, I think I will start really briefly with um, I just stuck. Uh, I actually have just one slide and then a couple of um, photos that we can look at um, to um, kind of test our um, skills at identifying fledglings. Um, so let me just share um, my screen. So if any of you, I, I did put, I put together a whole guide um, on 20 different species of fledglings um, back in 2020, the first year of the Atlas. Um, and when I did that, I put together this, come on, go to full screen. Hmm. That's not what I wanted. Interesting. It's not happened before. Huh. Okay, let's see here. Let's try this. All right, do you guys? Do you, what do you guys see? Do you see, Matt, can you tell me, do you see the um, the PowerPoint slide with the Robin? Yep, I see the Robin with uh, the 10, 10 different ID points. Okay, great. Yeah, my screen is being wonky. Um, so, all right, good. As long as you guys are seeing what you're supposed to be seeing. Um, so I put together this guide and um, we can share the link to it um, in a few minutes. Um, but the, there's a couple of things that we can look for on these young birds in order to identify them as a fledgling. So before I get too far in going through these 10 points, um, there is um, a difference between, we have the first stage, a nestling, and then you have, once they leave the nest, then they're called a fledgling. And then at some point, they end up being called a, a juvenile or an immature bird. Um, and those would be when they're no longer dependent on their parents. Um, and that's when they, they get, there. so they're older and they're still called juveniles in the first year. And then if it's a bird that takes like a like a bald eagle, it takes like four or five years in order to mature. Um, then they're called an immature in that in between time. So what we're talking about here is this fledgling stage, which is when we're most likely to see young birds when we're atlasing, um, and it's when they just leave the nest until they become independent. Um, so there's a few things that help you identify that a bird is a fledgling, um, that's different than identifying what the fledgling is, right? So that, that's a whole nother step that we can talk about in a minute. Um, so the first thing to look at is really the plumage, the, the colors of the, of the feathers and the patterning that you see. Um, a lot of times it looks very different than what you see on the adult birds. Um, so a lot of young birds, particularly sparrows and thrushes, they tend to have a lot of spots on them. Um, so that's a really good thing to look for. Um, and then um, the next thing, which is a really good key, is to look for downy feathers. Now this photo doesn't have a very good example, but you'll see on the very top of his head, um, there's still this one little tuft sticking out on the top of the head. So that would be a downy feather. Um, you might see feathers in sheaths. So when the feathers first start to develop on the bird, they're in these, um, they, they kind of look like a little plastic sheath. And that um, and that's only found on um, new feathers. So it also happens when birds are molting. Um, and or if they get injured and need to replace a feather, they'll end up with feathers in sheaths. But that can also be a sign that it's a young bird. 
And then you have um, buffy tips or edging. So you can see the, the middle of these um, feathers up on the, the nape of this robin have this nice pale buffy color right in the middle. And if you think about an adult robin, they're like solid brown. So that's not something that you would see on an adult. And different species are going to have slightly different colors. And I think I have a couple examples of some birds with other colors for those, those tips or edging that you'll see on, on the feathers. If you think of, um, you, maybe you're not familiar with it, but if you are familiar with a young morning dove, they look like they have scales on them because the edges of their feathers um, have this like black edging on them. So they look like they have scales instead of that nice solid gray color that you see on adults. The color of the iris, that's number five. So the eye color can vary quite a bit from a young bird to an adult bird. It's actually one of the things that we use a lot when we have birds in the hand. If we're out mist netting birds and banding them and we wanna age them, we actually look at the eye color and that is um, a really good aid for a lot of species. Um, so in a lot of species, it'll get paler as they get older. Um, but it's quite variable depending on the species. Um, the next thing would be bill color and shape. So a lot of times birds will have, um, young birds will have a, like a pink bill or a pale yellow bill, and the adults might have a really like a dark colored bill. Um, so that also is something that varies depending on the species, um, but that can be also a clue that they're um, not an adult bird yet. The mouth color is something else, um, and um, I'll show you some examples. So a lot of the, um, the corvids, so all of the, the jays and crows and things like that, um, and grackles and um, a few other species, they have very like bright pink inside their mouth when they open their mouth and beg for food. And that's a clear sign um, that it's a young bird. As they get older, it becomes blacker and blacker. It's another thing that we use when we're, um, when we have birds in the hand and we might be trying to age them. And then the color of the gape. So the gape is this corner bit here, this fleshy corner part of the bill. And that is called the gape. And a lot of um, young birds will have either a yellow or a pink gape. And so if you see that gape, that's um, a good clue that it's a, still a young bird. Um, then we have the tail. So you can see on this bird, it basically doesn't have a tail yet. It just looks like a plump little ball. Um, and that's a sign that it's not fully grown yet. Um, and then the last thing I have on here is leg, feet, and color. Uh, leg and feet color, <laughs> sorry. Um, and and that's another thing, like, like some of the other parts of the birds, like the eyes and the bill, the, the feet and legs um, can change color as they get older as well. Um, so they might go from like this, like you see here, it's like this, I don't know, pinky purple color. Um, and then they'll end up becoming grayer and, and blacker as they get older. So one of the things that's not on this on this slide, because it's more of a behavior than an actual um, physical ID characteristic, is their um, ability to fly and particularly their ability to land. So um, we were talking a little bit before this about the um, some of the woodpecker babies that are coming to our suet and having a hard time landing on those on the suet, um, and that's a clear sign that it's a young bird and hasn't quite figured out how to be really good at flying or landing. Um, so a lot of these birds. Um, 
if you're in the forest or on the field edge or something, you'll see them fly and then they try to land and they often are like, they'll like rock back and forth or they might slip a foot or they might just like crash down and their wings might be stuck out. Like, it's like pretty obvious that they're not a very good flyer. Um, so that's another sign that they're still a young bird. And then the last one I would mention is, um, if they're constantly um, making a lot of these, a lot of call notes or begging sounds. And when they're begging, um, they're often fluttering their wings at the same time and have their mouth wide open. Um, so that's also a sign that it's still a bird that is dependent on its parents. So I'm gonna stop my share right there, see if there's any questions on those key points first. And then, and then I'm gonna show you some, um, some photos and we can um, quiz ourselves and see how, how we're doing in terms of identifying what's a fledgling and why you would say that it's a fledgling. So are there any questions about those things first? No, just, um, just gonna try to fix my displays here. No, it's not letting me do it. Okay, well, oh well. All right, so let me switch to, I pulled up some images that you all have submitted on your eBird checklists. Um, so let me go over here. So what I did was, I went to the Macaulay Library. There we go. And um, so when you go to the Macaulay Library, um, if you want to look for um, fledgling photos, um, what you have to do is, is actually look for um, juveniles. So um, here on the left, we can go to um, select juvenile, and that's the closest thing that they have um, as, a, as a tag for the media. And then you can see some of the some of these will be things and some are juveniles, but so I pulled a few that we can look at here. So let's see, hang on. Matt, can you mute whomever's making the noise? Um, I'll have to try to remember how to do that, but sure. <laughs> you can just hover over them. Sorry, um, because my screen is, um, the screen is duplicating itself for some reason. I don't know why. Just did that. So, all right. So here is another Robin. Um, so this one looks pretty similar to the one we just saw. You can see that he's got lots of little um, downy feathers sticking out off from the top of his head. The top of the head tends to be one of the last places where they lose their downy feathers. That's the last place for, for the new feathers to come in. You can also tell on this bird, I don't know if, if you're not too, if you haven't spent a lot of time looking at bird feathers, you may, this may not be obvious, but if you have, um, you, if you look at these breast feathers here, you'll see that they're a lot more wispy and they're like these longer bracts on those feather tracks. And, and that tends to be how those young feathers are on birds. You'll, if you then compare that to an adult bird, it'll be, um, 
they'll be much more refined and um, like shorter and more um, like tighter, kind of a tighter weave almost for those feathers. Um, so these are still also kind of, wouldn't necessarily say downy, but these are definitely juvenile feathers that you see here on, on the belly, these orange feathers. Um, so this bird also has a really obvious yellow gape. And it also has all of those buffy tips on the feathers. It's got that super short tail. The tail is basically not even started coming in yet. Um, so this is a, a very clearly um, a juvenile. And this is um, this is another American robin. So this one, this is kind of a trick one in a way. But this may be more what you'll see, like if you're out in the woods and you come across a really young fledgling, it'll be something just kind of tucked away in the vegetation and it'll be this little fluff ball and you probably won't know what it is. <laughs> um, and, but you will see like, oh, okay, that's clearly a fledgling. Like it has, you can see it has like this yellow gape. It's got a kind of a, a blunt, tip on the bill so the bill isn't quite fully grown yet has no tail it's got these short little wings and it's got kind of these fluffy 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 young feathers on it um so this is is clearly a fledgling so it has probably just barely left the nest um, maybe a day or two before this photo um and this happens to be a, a worm-eating warbler um, and often when I come across birds like this, um, I will, I will back off and I will try to hide myself as much as I can, but still where I can see the bird. And then I just wait until an adult comes to feed it. And then you'll be able to identify what the species is without disturbing them. So if you're too close and you're too obvious, um, the adult may may not actually come in and feed the young. So it's important to make sure that you're kind of hidden and, and as far away as you can be and still see what the bird is. Uh, Julie, can I um, just yeah. want to mention uh, Arabella had her had her hand raised. Uh, she's got a question, I think. And then uh, Laura Stenzler had a question uh, in the chat. I don't know if you want me to try to answer okay. chat questions in the chat or bring them to your attention. Um. Yeah, we can do a mix of both. Okay. Um, so yeah, this um Arabella, do you want to ask your question? Sure. So I'm assuming that fledglings and juveniles also have a more difficult time landing because their tails aren't fully developed. Is that correct? Yes, yes. So okay. they often will use their, when their tail is full grown, they kind of use their tail as, as like ballast, like a, like you would use on a sailboat or something. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, when they don't have that, they're kind of front heavy and they have a hard time like correcting their weight <laughs> a little bit. So yeah, Thank for you. sure. Yeah. <laughs> Um, looks like so Laura had a question about the difference between newly fledged young and feeding young. If an adult is feeding, feeding a fledgling, is that feeding young or uh, newly fledged young? Um, I believe feeding young is the higher code. So either is, one yeah. is correct, either code is 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 correct and fine. Um, but generally what we want or what we ask you to do is to use the hot, what's we call an Atlas lingo as the highest code. And so in the, if you're using the mobile app, it would be the one that's farthest down the list as you go from top left to bottom right. So it would be the farthest one down that list that applies to your situation. Yep, in this case, it is um, both both FL recently fledged young and FY feeding young. Those are both confirmed codes, but FY is is slightly higher on the list. Yeah. All right. Let's see. So. Let's go to the next one. 
This one's a little bit harder. This is a little adorable little winter wren. Um, <laughs> this one, it's harder to tell because, well, one, we don't normally get a really good look at a winter wren, but, <laughs> but, um, and then two, it, it has like, kind of has this, the adult coloration already, but there's two things that I would point out on this bird. So one is that really obvious yellow gape. So you can see there's still some of that yellow gape there. And then um, these feathers that are sticking out on the, the side of the chest out from under the wing, those, um, I'm not sure if they're downy feathers or just young feathers. They look kind of like downy feathers, um, but they're, they're clearly um, part of its first set of feathers from when it, from when it first hatched. Um, so those are kind of two clues that it's a young bird. Could you maybe could you maybe use your mouse pad to zoom in on that a little bit? Just uh, go pretend we're going to high power binoculars because it's a little a little tricky to see. There we go. That better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So these the like they look kind of like gray. These little tufted feathers that are coming out on the side of the breast. So so yeah, depending on the on the species and just how they tend to be growing. Oftentimes it's the, the top of the head that has the last downy feathers, but sometimes it will be there right under the um, right under the wings on the side of the breast. That's kind of the other spot where they tend to retain those young feathers um, at the, the last the last few downy feathers. All right. And then this one is kind of a trick question. Um, would so right here we have a uh, common ravens, and on the left is the adult, and I have no idea what it is feeding. Um, <laughs> to its young, it looks kind of gross. Uh, something slimy and yellow, and then you have the young bird on the right. And um, if you remember, I said that corvids, um, so those the jays and the the crows and the ravens, um they have really bright pink um, inside their mouths when they're first born. Um, so you can see that really well on this bird. Um, but um, this is a little bit of a trick question because this bird is not quite a fledgling yet, right? It's still in the nest. So um, I think that's something that we tend to, we're like, oh, it's an adult feeding young. Okay, we can just use the FY code, the feeding young code. Um, but if they're feeding young in the nest, then nest with young is actually the higher code. So we would use nest with young in this case. Um, just just uh, something I forget sometimes too. I mean, both codes are applicable and they're both confirmed codes. Um, so it doesn't like really matter, but um, but that's just the standard protocol. If you remember to enter that as nest with young, that would be the, the better code. All right, and this one is a red-winged blackbird. So this one, we can still see some of the downy feathers on the head. You can see the bill um, is really pink, which they, they tend to have black bills or like dark brown bills when they're adults. Um, it doesn't have all the feathers around its eye yet. And it also has a lot of that, those buffy edges that um, young birds tend to have. So it has all of those little, that pale um, orangey, I don't know what color you would call it, orangey buff color on the edge of the, the feathers all on the back of the, the neck and the wings. Um, so that's another sign that this is, is a young bird. All right, I only have a couple more. Um, house finches, um, you can't really see the young bird very well, but you can really clearly see a couple of these tufts still left on the head. Plus, it's also doing that begging position that I was mentioning before, where they're they're kind of leaning forward, they've got their mouth open, they're making lots of noise, calling and begging, and then they're flat, fluttering their wings and trying to get the attention of the adult to feed them. Um, 
there are ones that I, I don't know, they're really funny because I feel like they're always these little devils running around because they, they end up with these little tufts on either side of their, of the top of their head, um, for quite a while after they fledge. So they're kind of, <laughs> I don't know, little funny little guys. All right. So this is a little different. Here we have a woodpecker. Um, so one of the first things to notice on this, this is a yellow-bellied sapsucker baby. Um, it still has like a tiny bit of an orange gape here. Um, you can see that the, the coloration overall is very different from an adult bird. It still has like that big white patch in the wing, but if you look at like the head has all the spotting, the chest has all this spotting. Um, and then lastly, if you look, the um, the tail is still really short, and I'm I'm not I'm trying to decide if I think those the wings are actually the wings also look a little short to me, um, not sure on that, but um, but yeah, so so it still is is quite a young bird and is probably still being fed by the parents. Let's see. So this is an interesting situation. In the, the previous Alice's in New York, there was a separate code for, um, for what we call precocial species. So those are birds where the young hatch and they're pretty much ready to go. Um, they can go and, um, and feed themselves. They can swim. They can walk. They could run. Um, they just need the adults to basically keep them safe and show them where they can find food to eat. Um, so, but in this breeding bird, Alice, um, we um, we don't have that separate code for those precocial coastal species. So as soon as things like ducks and geese and swans and um, what else, terns and killdeers and lots of our shorebirds, as soon as they leave the nest site, they're considered a fledgling. Um, and that may just, that may be within a day of them hatching. Um, so they're, that we still would use fledgling for that. This is actually a mix of species, if you can't tell. We've got some hooded merganser babies and then some, what, mallard or wood duck? I always screw them up. <laughs> All right, and then one last one. Um, this is also maybe a bit of a trick question, um, but this is a young starling. Um, so here, I mean, starling, young starlings look very different from adults. They're this just overall slaty gray color. Um, they have none of the spotting or anything that the adults have. Um, this one, to me, looks like he could kind of go either way. He may still be a fledgling. It's hard to say if it still has a bit of a pink gape. Um, I would have to see the bill when it was closed. For the most part, it looks like it could probably fly pretty well. And it really actually, I mean, it looks to me like it can probably feed itself too. Um, so this one I would probably, it like is right on the cusp and I would want to watch the behavior of the bird a little bit in order to know, like to get a better sense, like is this still like a dependent young or is it is is it able to fend for itself? Um, so sometimes it is a little bit of a judgment call. And when that happens, you just use your best, your best um, guess at, at what you think, your best judgment, what you think, whether it's still a fledgling or not. Um, and then the last thing, so that's the last of those. And then I just wanted to um, share this link with everyone so that you can go to the, okay, let's stop the share and put in the chat. So you can, thanks, Stacy. <laughs> Um, so in the chat, I put the link to the, um, 
the actual fledgling guide that I put together. So if you want to look at those um, 20 species um, examples um, in that whole presentation, um, please go ahead and do that. For each of the those species, I've got an example photo, and then I also have um, tips for each of those species explaining how you would identify a fledgling from, from a, a juvenile. Oh, geez. Oh, for the what the raven was feeding the young. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's all I had. Um, I don't know. So there are a few um, regional coordinators on the call. Um, and I would love to hear from you briefly if you have anything to add to what I said, or if you just want to like give a shout out and just say your name and let people know who you are. Um, so Matt, do you want to go first? Uh, sure. You, ca you caught me looking at those adorable fletchlings. Uh, <laughs> if, you haven't checked out, if you haven't checked out Julie's guide or if it's been a while, check it out because just the, like They're the, just eastern, so cute. the eastern Phoebe is so cute. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm Matt Medler. Uh, I live in Ithaca. Uh, I am uh, helping coordinate uh, the eastern part of northern New York, and then also helping out a little bit here in central New York uh, in the Ithaca area, trying to encourage people to go west to uh, Steuben and Yates County and places like that that need some need some love. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Matt's also helping me um, manage questions tonight, too. Um, Tom, I see you're on. Do you want to say hello? Oh, you're muted. There you go. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm Tom Wheeler. I'm from Canton, New York, uh, one of the northern regional coordinators. And I thought, Matt, you should be sending them north, not west. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, I had an interesting uh, thing the other day. I had vultures sitting quietly on the road and very shiny uh, feathers look very fresh and I kept wondering if they were fledglings waiting for a meal or something but um, they were very quiet and they weren't flying very well either so mm, I wonder they were I assume they were turkey vultures oh yes turkey vultures um, yeah <laughs> up in your your area um, interesting, you know, um, a former Alliser, he, he moved to Colorado. That's why I say he's a former Alliser, um, had put together some tips on me for how to identify juvenile vultures because they can be, well, one, they can be hard to identify from each other, a turkey versus a black vulture. Um, and he was down in the Southern part of the state, but, um, yeah, I should pull that out. Um, cause I'm actually, I, don't really know what to look for for a young vulture myself, honestly. Um, if I didn't see them like in a barn or something, uh, I wouldn't really know. Yeah. Oh, any, anyone else knows. Other than that, I'm just high. So I've been working hard. <laughs> Thanks, Tom. <laughs> um, Sue, I see you're on tonight. Yeah, hi, I'm Sue Barth, um, the regional coordinator for um, part of Western New York, and I live in Erie County. We've got a lot of fledglings around here coming to our feeders, little baby finches, purple finches, and house finches. A lot of, lot of fun. Awesome. Nice. Let's see, did I miss anyone? Let me just go through. In the meantime, uh, Tom, do you want to announce the... Uh... The big atlas weekend event uh for uh jefferson county <laughs> um only if, um it's actually um in jefferson county but right on the border with st lawrence um and it's going to be at the indian lakes uh reserves um which is a uh, the land group, or 
Pardon? Is it a land? Is it a conservancy? Land conservancy? It's a conserv land conservancy. They have uh, trails, yeah. um, and they've acquired some some pretty nice parcels. Uh, the block where many of them are located uh, is not not well surveyed right now, and Jeff uh, Bolsinger is uh, hoping that we can finish it off in a day. Um, there are also some other blocks uh, in the area that uh, that need coverage. So if we have a lot of people, um, we've got uh, places to go. Um, so we're going to try to meet around 730 um, at uh, the headquarters of the uh, Indian Lakes Conservancy. Um, we have a large parking lot there on the Stein Road in Redwood, New York. Redwood is probably 20 miles north of um, Watertown on uh, Route 37. So if anybody is interested, uh, you can send me uh, an email for more information. We are going to put uh, a notice on New York State Listserv and uh, Northern New York Audubon. And there will be a lunch uh, break at noon where we're going to have some food. So probably subs of some sort. <laughs> yeah, so let me um, introduce Big Atlas Weekend a little bit if anyone hasn't heard of it yet. Um, the Atlas weekend will be next weekend. So the 20, um, my God, is it the 23rd, 22nd? The 23rd to the 25th. Um, and it's um, a weekend where we get together with other Atlas projects across the continent. Um, so we've got six Atlas projects participating this year, all the way from Newfoundland down to Puerto Rico. Um, and it's just a, a basically an awareness kind of weekend where we just try to get people outside in the summer months aware of these Atlas projects, aware of um, you know what these birds are actually doing during the summer months, which is amazing stuff. And raising young and um, just surviving in, through the summers. Um, and so we have some, some competitions where you can participate and you can win prizes. And then we also compete against the other Atlas projects as well. Um, and then as part of this weekend, we do have events organized across the state. Um, so I know I'll be leading a walk around the capital region. Um, Wendy is, has organized um, a block party down in the Catskills, and Sue and Mike Morganti are organizing something out in Western New York, and then hopefully um, we'll have a few more events as well. Um, so uh, anyways, it's kind of a, it's a fun way to get together, and then the Wednesday before and the Wednesday after we get together as well. Um, the Wednesday before, so that's next Wednesday, um, we do the kickoff and we are going to have bird trivia, like Atlas related bird trivia night. And then the following weekend is where we award prizes and figure out who was the overall Atlas winner. So it's kind of fun. We also have swag and stuff you can buy. And um, I put some links in the, in the chat so you can um, learn more about that if you haven't heard about it already. So yeah, it's kind of a fun, fun thing. So um, there are a couple of good questions in the chat. Um, I was gonna answer the one from uh, Laura about fledging, uh, and then Julie, I'm gonna stick you with the one from uh, Kay Conway about um, uh, okay. individual family recognition, because uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a hard one. Um, so, um, so Laura had a question, she said, uh, how long after hatching do birds fledge? That means fly, right? Is it a set period or different depending on the bird? Um, so the first thing is, um, yeah, so the definition of the term fledge, uh, I pulled up the, the Cornell Guide to 
to biology just to make sure I have the right definition. So the definition for fledge is really just to leave the nest. Um, and the reason we use that rather than flying is because a lot of birds leave the nest before they're uh, really capable of like, as Julie was saying, controlled controlled flight. They might be able to do little spurts, but they're not flying like a, an adult bird. Uh, so fledging just means to leave the nest and it varies. Uh, so like killdeer chicks, I think, uh, the nest is really just kind of a scrape on the ground and they, they're running around within a few hours after being born, I think. Um, and then they're like big raptors might take weeks uh, to, to fledge or, or longer. Um, so the, the, the handbook says that most uh, songbirds leave the nest about nine to 12 days after the eggs, after they hatch. So, so it does vary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I always think like 10 to 14 days is usually what I always think of for a lot of these birds, um, the smaller birds. And then it can be, yeah, even like two months, I think for some of the large raptors. So yeah, it's kind of cool. And I'm not familiar, Laura, with the Nest Watch app. I actually haven't used it. Um, but hopefully um, that definition of that when they leave the nest is will help. And I wanted to add to that too, that um, a lot of times um, they're like, so the first time that a bird leaves the nest, um, a lot of times they still can't really fly. And that happens to be when a lot of us concerned citizens find these little baby birds on the ground and we want to pick them up and save them and take them to like a rehabilitator or something. And a lot of times they actually don't need to be taken to a rehabilitator because their, their parents still know, they know where they are. They can um, find them based on their, their calling, the sounds that they're making. Um, and they're still going to be coming and feeding them. It's like a, there's like a couple of days after they leave their nest where they're still like hopping around on the ground and not able to fly. Um, and that's just a normal part of their development. Um, the only thing I would, the only caveat to that is if you know that there are a lot of predators around that could come and eat those baby birds, then you may want to pick them up and put them high up in a tree where they're not going to get, or in a, in a bush where they're not going to get as easily attacked by say like a, a, a feral cat or a fox or something like that. So, um, yeah. And then I kind of alluded to um, uh, Conway's question, how do birds recognize their own young when other families are present? They do a, a lot of birds. I mean, it's kind of like, like humans, like we, we tend to recognize individual voices, even though we all sound, you know, like the, the frequency with which we're, within which we're speaking is a very narrow frequency range. We still can identify individual voices, right? So they can also identify individual voices and they've done these, you know, you know, cool things where you go into like a seabird colony and they're just jam packed you have birds like one right next to the other next to the other next to the other and they're just all packed in and the adults still can fly in and they hear they key in on the sound of their young and they'll come in and go right to their their young and um and feed feed them so they're cueing in on the their sound for for most species it's it's really remarkable when you think of the noise in some of these large colonies, how they can hear that one bird that's theirs. And it, I mean, they all sound the same to us, but yeah. All right, any other questions? A cafeteria for starlings. What does that mean? 
<laughs> what you have to explain now. <laughs> All right, does anyone else have any questions or comments? It could be about fledglings or it could be about any other part of the atlas. Yeah, Dan. Um, one thing I, I find useful and it might be confusing if you see a ratty looking bird, uh, you may assume that it's young one, but a lot of the adults are molting now. Mm. And that's also a good key to me. Oh, so. This raven flies over and it looks like it's missing a whole bunch of feathers. Oh, that's an adult. Where is it going? Is it going, you know? So there's there's that to be aware of. And like and whole nesters now, um, the adults, a lot of them look really dirty. And mm -hmm. so if you see one come to a feeder with a very clean, you know, the young ones look really spiffy. While the the parents look like parents. Like they're, exactly. they're all worn, you know, they look like they're about at the end of their <laughs> their job, you know, and uh, like I, first I time know, parents. <laughs> so you can see these little family groups, particularly like black capped chickadees, you know, the, the the parents will look just terrible, all the feathers worn, and the little ones are just spiffy and energetic and all of that. I mean, it's it's yeah. an interesting thing. Uh, I got a great point photo of a female red-winged blackbird carrying food and I really didn't notice it until I saw the photo but her tail feathers are just a mess you know they're all worn from a you know a long a lot of flying a lot of moving around and so I find that a, a nice way to find family units and then make some of those mm -hmm. you know okay this is a recently fledged bird here and yeah so something to tune in on a little bit. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, um, Jean. Oh, hang on, you're muted again, hang on. <laughs> okay, yeah. um, I, I have a question about um, agitated behavior. Yes. I find that a very frustrating thing. I was climbing up Potash Mountain last week, and uh, as we were coming down the backside at the top, uh, a pair of ravens were just going nuts. The two of them circled us for calling extensively for five or 10 minutes till we really got out of their territory. Now, seems like if you put down agitated behavior that's kind of a weak <laughs> um <laughs> definition but you know those birds had a nest so i just i, I don't know is it, it, it and i find that too with a bird that's slightly more than a fledged bird but hanging out with the parents and you know there again that you have no no code for pretty young, almost a fledgling, <laughs> you know, I'm sure it's a family, but kind of thing. So if you have any insights into how you handle those situations. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, let me back up a little bit because I think a lot of people first have a hard time. It, there's kind of a, a continuum with um, the territorial code and then the agitated code and then the distraction display code. So it kind of goes from the T all the way to that DD code. Um, so territorial is, is mostly when you have two birds of the same species. Um, for the most part, you can think of it that way. Two birds of the same species that are trying to um, either figure out their territories or figure out who their mate is going to be. And then agitated is usually between two different species, um, including humans. So it could be the raven and the human. Um, so my guess is this time of year, they probably had young somewhere. So they're probably um, probably some fledglings on the ground somewhere that they were <laughs> afraid you were getting too close to. Um, so yeah, and then agitated can, can 
be quite variable depending on the species with could be a mild agitation or it can be really intense. If it gets super intense, then they end up doing um, one of those distraction displays that we talked about last time. So it could be feigning injury or it could be something like trying to just lead you away from the nest. Um, but I... Um, I would say for ravens, I'm not familiar. I'm not aware that they have distraction displays at all. Um, so I'm guessing, um, yeah, agitated is probably the correct code there. You're right that it is very variable. I mean, it's, it is, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, I've, there's a lot of, um, I've, I've heard a lot of people ask about the family units. And so once they, like, say you have a family of Orioles, Baltimore Orioles, um, and they're kind of foraging together, but the young aren't dependent on the adults anymore. So it's more just like this family unit that's kind of going around and foraging. We don't have a code for that. Um, and... The reason why we don't have a code for that situation is because those birds can move large distances and then we wouldn't know where they actually were nesting. Um, so we wouldn't be able to associate the location where they are like that post breeding stage to the actual breeding period. Does that help at all? Uh, yes. <laughs> I, I, mean, I do understand the philosophy behind it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's, sort of like, it's still uh, frustrating. Yes, but um, yes, I do understand. You know, the the, yeah. the uh, particularly for the young birds, how they could have moved away from the nest and be with the parents. So yes, yeah. Traction display. I don't know. Maybe if you um put something in the comments, that would be a way to make it more clear. Um, I, I also once was in the spa park and a, a red-tailed hawk was on top of a tower and it cried and cried and cried and cried. And I thought, what's wrong with this bird? And then I realized it was me. Yes. And it, it <laughs> wouldn't shut up until I finally left the area. And I came back another day and it went right up there and did the same thing. Mm. So, you know, I, I, it's kind of, now what does that mean? I probably, probably a you know, a nest someplace in the vicinity, I assume, but, but yes. that's distraction display, um, you know, right. Yeah. And Ken, um, Ken Clark just put something in the chat and sorry, I am, I am getting to you, Kathy, in just, just a minute. Um, Ken put a, a good point in the, the chat that, um, uh, coding agitated is still, it's, it's a good, it's a solid code. I mean, it's still, it still helps the atlas, right? Like we still gain a lot of information and it's a probable code. And um, so maybe not as strong as a confirmed code, but it still helps us meet our targets to, to like say that that block is complete. Um, so, cause we're trying to get 45 codes that are probable or confirmed. Um, so even those probable codes still still are good and help us. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. <laughs> um, all right, I'm gonna go to Kathy. Did you still have a question? I know you took your hand down. Well, it was kind of answered. I thought, I guess oh. that's what you can write in the comments. If you're okay. not quite sure, is that a good thing to do then? Yes, anytime you're not sure about an observation, you have seen how to interpret it, how to add a code, add a comment, please. Because if when I'm like reviewing the data over the winter and I see something weird, if there's comments there, it helps me know what like the code should actually be. Um, so I can, I can tweak it a little bit if I, if needed. Yeah. So it's, that's, that's exactly what you should be doing. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> wow. Estelle says in the comments that um, she's been hit, um, dive bombed by red winged blackbirds 
so much that it was brushing against your head. Um, I'm, I'm glad it wasn't actually hitting your head because I've, I've definitely had that happen. I've been, <laughs> let's see, tree swallows, turns, goshawk, almost hit my head. <laughs> um, like it definitely happens. So <laughs> you're lucky it didn't actually hit your head because they can draw blood, even though they're small birds, they can, they can draw blood from the top of your head. <laughs> Um, I wanted to mention before we before we hang up tonight that I did um, uh, um, when I sent out the reminder for this um, town hall, um, I put that this was um, fledglings number one. And my hope is in a couple of weeks to do fledglings number two and try to focus more on the fledgling calls, the call notes. We'll see how far I get in trying to do that, but I know like a lot of people have been asking me to do that. Um, the question is how many sound recordings I can find to help support doing that. Um, so um, yeah, so anyways, I am hoping to do that in a few weeks. So the next two weeks we've got the, the big Atlas weekend is the focus. And then the next town hall after that is when I'm hoping to do fledglings number two. So. Stay tuned for that. Um, yeah. <laughs> when they finally shut up, they are juveniles. Nice. <laughs> Starling babies are really obnoxious. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everyone. As always, you can reach us on Facebook or on um, by email or um, uh, yeah, Instagram, all that stuff. Um, I will put this recording up on YouTube as soon as I get a chance. The previous town halls are all on YouTube. Um, so if you missed one, you can go there. And I hope everyone is having fun because there's so many babies and birds carrying food right now. Um, it's kind of a fun time to be out there. So take care, everyone. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Bye. Hi. Bye. Sorry I was late. No worries. Talking with Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Bye.